Could the San Francisco 49ers actually deal all-pro wide receiver Debo Samuel in the lead-up to the 2024 season? We're talking about that on today's 49ers report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. And the reason that we're having this conversation, NFL insider Albert Breer in his Sports Illustrated column saying he could see Debo getting moved this offseason by the Niners because Brandon Ayuk is looking for a lofty contract extension. My read on this entire situation has been this. And this goes back to when the Niners lost the Super Bowl to the Kansas City Chiefs in gut-wrenching fashion. I think the Niners run it back with the entire collection of this veteran core for one last dance type of season this upcoming season. Then I think in 2025, they look at the roster, they look at the money owed to some of their premium players, and they're going to have to make some very difficult emotional roster, and football decisions like they just did a couple of months ago in Eric Armstead. And right after the Niners lost that game to Kansas City in Las Vegas, and we're all still not over it, I put out this photo on my X page, formerly known as Twitter, The Last Dance. Now, I think some players are going to be safe, but in the case of Adebo Samuel, when there are great wide receivers coming out of the draft and coming out of the college ranks every year, you just drafted Ricky Pearsall, you have Brandon Ayuk looking for a massive contract extension, Debo's been banged up, hasn't been as available as you'd like after that contract, it makes sense for him to maybe get moved at some point. Could it be this offseason? Here's what Albert Breer had to say in a Sports Illustrated piece, if there's a guy that could get moved, it's probably Debo Samuel. With San Francisco looking to get an extension done for Brandon Ayuk, the team's best pure receiver is Ayuk. Samuel, a great player, may be seen as more of a luxury to have at this point, especially with another do-everything type in Christian McCaffrey who may look for a pay bump of his own this summer. In speaking of Christian McCaffrey, he is under contract for the next two years. We know how running backs age, and with McCaffrey, I need to see what he looks like in 2024 because he led the NFL in touches in 2023, had more than 2,000 off-purpose yards. I know that from the time that he was growing up with Ed McCaffrey, Super Bowl champion, all-pro as his dad, Ed was grooming him to be a great football player but when you get the rock that many times and you play the position that you do, you're due to get banged up. Sometimes the shelf life, not all that long. But we know that Kyle Shanahan loves him. And we know that McCaffrey is a unique blend of skills as a wide receiver. Could he extend his career a little bit by being a little bit more of a receiving back once he starts to get a little bit older? But yes, it's totally true. He could be looking for a pay bump, a contract extension, and he has leverage on his side because all he's done with San Francisco is be available, a problem his last two years with Carolina, and produce a lot. And in turn, the Niners, since making that trade, they've won a lot of football games. As for the Debo trade implications, if Debo were to get dealt to another team prior to June 1, the Niners would have to eat $21.7 million in dead money. They would only save $6.9 million. It makes no fiscal sense at all to trade him pre-June 1. It's like getting rid of a stock that's booming. You don't want to act too soon because it's just going to be a negative asset, right? Post-June 1, though, that's when a trade could make some sense for San Francisco and then that frees up some money potentially for a Brandon IU contract extension. Next offseason, Brock Purdy. And come June 1, after you let go of Eric Armstead, the Niners are going to have $18 million coming their way. So a post-June 1 trade, $6.5 million in dead money. But then basically, these numbers flip. Because then you get $22 million in cap savings. Look, it's a business. Athletes know that, Kyle Shanahan knows that, John Lynch knows that. We have to start looking at it as more of a business and forget about some of the emotional ties that we have with some of our favorite athletes. I get it. Fan is short for fanatic, but the Niners as an organization are factoring this in here. I can guarantee you those conversations are happening within the SAP Performance Center in Santa Clara, California. And sometimes... Teams do try to get rid of a player 
too early as compared to too late while the value is high. And in the case of Debo, Ricky Pearsall is more of a Debo replacement, in my opinion, than he is an Ayuk replacement. Majority of his snaps came in the slot. And you can also utilize Ricky Pearsall like he was utilized at Florida, bubble screens, end arounds, reverses. He is not the physical player that Debo is, not even close. He's not as explosive after the catch, more of a refined route runner, a true wide receiver. But as far as the role of him operating out of the slot and then getting creative with ways to get him the football, you can use him in a Debo type of way. But there is no replacing Debo Samuel's rare ability. He's built like a running back. He's thick with girth. He has the pull-away speed. He can run you over, and he's a threat to take it to the paint and take it to the end zone any moment he has his hands on the football. That's why I love number 19. That's why a lot of people out there love the number 19, because he plays the game the right way. And game breakers like that don't come around often. But you know what the issue is? Debo has become an expensive, aging, and injury-prone player. And we had this conversation a little bit earlier this offseason. If you were to hold on to one, who would you hold on to? Who would you extend? Who would you invest in? I made the argument. It was Brandon Ayuk. Tweeted that out. That's why Debo Samuel blocked me most likely. But the numbers don't lie here, ladies and gentlemen. When you compare the last two years between Ayuk and Debo, Ayuk, 33 games. Debo, 28 games. Targets, Ayuk, 219. Debo. 183, receptions, 153 to 116 in the favor of Ayuk. Yards, 800 more for Ayuk, 2,357, 1,524 for Debo. Yards per catch, 15 and a half for Ayuk, 13.1 for Debo, and total touchdowns. This includes carries. Ayuk doesn't have any rushing touchdowns, 15 to 17. And yes, as I mentioned, and as I've said many times, that's the special rare ability for Debo, where he can line up outside, inside, as a running back, jet sweeps, reverses, bubble screens. He can be a return man, and he does a great job of making guys miss, running through tackles, and giving you explosive splash plays. But I think that with the Niners drafting of Pearsall, having Ayuk on this team, they're valuing wide receivers who are really good route runners. And that kind of got exposed in Debo's game against the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl when he struggled to get open and struggled to track down the long ball. This is a pressing question here, and it's today's poll question, and it's our pinned comment for today's video here on the Niners Report. Will Debo be on this football team in 2024? I'm going to say on, but if you disagree with me, make sure you type off. Coming up next, which teams did Albert Breer list as Debo Samuel trade destination. Stay tuned for that. But in talking about Ricky Pearsall, his jerseys, they're flying off the shelves, actually. And you can get yours today at chatsports.com slash Pearsall. He's not going to wear the number one, not taking over that number from Debo. He's going to wear the number 14. When you buy this jersey, you'll get the 14 Pearsall jersey, which I think is a pretty clean wide receiver number, by the way. But with these first-round picks, when they had these introductory press conferences, when they sell their jerseys from the jump, it's the draft round, first round for Ricky Pearsall. Pearsall jerseys, chatsports.com slash Pearsall. That link is hanging out down in the show notes right below this video. As for the Debo Samuel trade destinations that Albert Breer had mentioned, pretty interesting collection of teams. Let's hear from Breer here. As for the fits for Samuel, I think you'd... Look at some of the usual suspects in that coaching tree. San Francisco won't trade him to the Los Angeles Rams. And I can't imagine they'd send him to the Green Bay Packers either. But the Atlanta Falcons with offensive coordinator Zach Robinson, a Sean McVay guy, might make some sense. The New York Jets could too as a piece for the receiver group and for some depth behind Brees Hall at tailback. And a reunion with Mike McDaniel and the Miami Dolphins, could also be fun. Some thoughts on those destinations from Albert Breer. I wouldn't be able to stomach, nor would you, or the Niners, 
trading him away to the Los Angeles Rams. A team, by the way, that Debo has always played very, very well against. He has dominated the Los Angeles Rams. And to see him in that uniform, especially with how bent out of shape he was following the 2021 NFC Championship game, that would be weird. And then you're giving Sean McVay a weapon where, like Kyle Shanahan, he's going to get creative with ways to find him the football. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to trade him within the division. And then another one of the Mount Rushmore hated teams for the faithful is the Green Bay Packers because of the history between these two organizations. And from a roster construction standpoint, Green Bay is already stacked at wide receiver. We saw that in the divisional round. They're five deep at the wide receiver spot, also with two really good tight ends. And I think that they're set there, and they paid Josh Jacobs. And then they drafted a running back, too, in the draft. Atlanta Falcons, though, you invested in Kirk Cousins. You gave him $100 million guaranteed money over the next two years. You drafted, for whatever reason, an old Michael Penix. He's going to be 24 during his rookie campaign. I think he takes over next year the year after for Kirk Cousins, given his age. But Atlanta, with Kirk or with Penix, they could use another wide receiver alongside Drake London, alongside tight end Kyle Pitts. You have Bijan Robinson. You put Debo on that team. That offense becomes very interesting, and you know that Kirk is going to be able to find ways to get him the football. The New York Jets, Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall. Makes a lot of sense there, plus Robert Sala has the connection with Debo Samuel, and the Niners as an organization have that line of communication with New York as well. And then you have Mike McDaniel. Debo was the first team All-Pro in 2021 when Mike McDaniel was the 49ers offensive coordinator, and with how good the Niners were at moments offensively that year, even with a mid-quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo, Debo put that offense on his back to end the year. I thought he thought he should have gotten more recognition to an MVP, and McDaniel was a part of finding creative ways to get Debo Samuel the pill. And with that, Debo was just sensational that year. I mean, just one of the more incredible offensive seasons that you'll see from an offensive skill player. And you got those 2021 vibes just kind of hanging in the balance there. And then it's Debo with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell, maybe the fastest running back room in the history of the NFL with Jalen Wright, 4-3-40 guy. Devon A. Chain, 4-3-40 guy. Raheem Mostert, 4-3-40 guy. You put Debo on that team, and the Miami looking to try to get over that hump, not having a lot of playoff success over the last several decades, that could be an aggressive move that Miami could look to make, and Debo and McDaniel get along very well. So a lot of contract extensions coming up for San Francisco. Ayuk, Purdy, Traverius Ward, Yamador Lenore, Talano Hufonga, and in the NFL draft every year, a lot of wide receiver talent that comes out. And the point there is that you can get a good player for an affordable price, and the Niners just did that with Ricky Pearsall. Let me know what you thought about today's show. If you want to reach out to me, say what's up. Hit me up, X, Instagram, at Chase underscore Senior. A lot of short-form content going on on those social media pages as well. Look forward to seeing you and hearing from you as well.